Let's talk about that common problem that many parents have that they don't really like the way they're having to nag continually their children. What they mean is that they have to tell their child to do the same thing over and over again, or when they call their child's name, the child ignores them, has that wait a minute disease, or trying to get them off technology, and they feel like they have to say it over and over again. Uh, let's talk about how we can make some changes there and what that looks like. I'm convinced that uh, sometimes children don't have the character to respond to their parents or that it kind of wears down. And parents, when they think about firmness, often think about consequences. You know, I need to do something to my kid in order to get him to move forward. And consequences are an important part of parenting. Uh, and we know have to know how to use consequences. But sometimes what we need to do is back that up a little bit. And we just need to take action earlier. Sometimes when we say to a child, hey, you need to get off the electronics, if they don't respond right away, we need to say, okay, we're done with electronics for a little bit because I don't want to be nagging you. So we have a meeting with the child and says, look, I don't want to be nagging you to get off the electronics over and over again. I don't like what that's doing to me. I don't like what it's doing in our relationship. So we're going to have a new plan. You know, I'm going to let you have some electronics an hour today. But if you can't get off the electronics at the end of the hour on your own without me coming to talk to you about it, then you're not going to be able to use electronics the next day. I just, and that's using consequences in a way that's prompting children to take responsibility for themselves. That you need to watch the clock while you're on the electronics. Is that unreasonable for a child? No. And they can learn how to, to watch the clock because that's what responsibility is. Or you're calling your child and your child, and your child's ignoring you. You might have to move toward them a bit, not get in their space. We're not trying to create a fight here, a physical fight. We're just getting closer to them and saying, look, you need to come. I called your name. So uh, what we're doing is we're taking action earlier. And that may be what kind of firmness we need to get rid of the nagging. If you find yourself saying the same thing over and over again, then you've got a problem. Now, some parents have their own problem. They say, OK, we're leaving in 10 minutes. I need to start working on this now. So 10 minutes before they're telling the kid, get by the door, get by the door, get your shoes on, you know, and they're doing all this work to get the child going out of the door. And maybe they need to develop a strategy for going out of the door. That doesn't require you. We still can give kids a five minute warning or something. But then when we say it's time to go, that child needs to be able to get up and move and move forward. And that comes through training. So sometimes we're going to take action earlier. Sometimes we're going to engage in training exercises that say, okay, let me just tell you, we're going to practice how we're going to leave the house. Because when I say you got your five minute warning, that doesn't mean you got five more minutes to play on your, uh, on your uh, Legos or something. It means you need to start thinking about getting ready so you can walk out the door when it's time. So in that kind of way, what we're doing is we're helping our children to to learn and to grow. And so firmness becomes important. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible. I think we can apply to parenting. It says this in Matthew 5, 37. Above all, above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by simply anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Well, now that's being as talked about in the Sermon on the Mount about just using your vocabulary in a way that doesn't involve promising or, oh, I have to promise or I'm going to swear by something. But rather than do that, we make our yes, a yes and a no, no. I think we can do the same thing with our children. I think we need to be able to say to a child, the answer is no. And you you can't keep coming after me over and over again. Because so what happens is a child you say no to a child, the child then comes back and you feel like you've got to rationalize and justify and 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 defend yourself. And sometimes the answer is no, we're not going to do that now. And so parents can develop this ability to be firm. The firmness doesn't have to be mean to a child. It just says, I'm not going to keep talking to you about this. There is a, a value to my words. I think that's what Jesus is saying in that uh, verse. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. You don't have to back it up with all kinds of things. Just make it clear. I don't think sometimes parents, their yes means yes or their no means no. Some children believe that the parents know means that we can talk about it some more. <laughs> I think we want to teach our children uh, a little bit more about this and firmness can be helpful. It's not wrong to talk to your kids and I want to be gracious about this, but sometimes children have a problem. They just need to be able to listen to a no answer. So we need to let our yes be yes and our no no sometimes and that's what we're going to do.